morning. I wish it was sunny and hot. It's too dry. I need water. Please get me out of here. Huh? Oh, so humid. You could cut through this air with a knife. I just want something a little bit drier, maybe with a view. Huh. Huh. Oh well, I wonder if there's even such a thing as a perfect climate. Okay, so it might be common sense that climates near the poles would be cold, and climates near the equator would be hot. But if you traveled around the equator, you would find that some regions have hot and dry climates, and some are hot and humid. And between the equator and the poles, where you would only expect some temperate climates, you would find some pretty amazing extremes. Let's go and visit some of these extremes and see if we can figure out what causes them. All right. So we're here in the deserts of Moab and it's extremely dry because there's very little precipitation. And the amount that falls here is determined by a few different factors. Winds, for example, move clouds, which are essentially masses of water vapor that have condensed. Now, if there's a mountain range in the path of the wind, the clouds rise up over the mountain and cool. Now this causes the rain or snow to fall on the windward side of the mountain. The mountain range prevents the precipitation to reach the leeward side of the mountain where it's much drier. So, deserts are frequently found on the leeward sides of mountains. All right, but precipitation is only one component of climate. Then, there's temperature. So why is the equator hot and the poles cold? Well, the sun's energy hits Earth more directly at the equator, and at the poles, the sun's energy comes in at more of an angle. So, more energy is absorbed at the equator, and the equator is hot. But the sun's energy doesn't heat the air directly. Instead, it heats up the ground, and the ground warms up the air. Believe it or not, but temperature and climate can also be affected by how close an area is to a large body of water, like the ocean. So to help us explain this, we're gonna follow Jonas, who's in an area a little bit cooler than here. That's true. In some parts of the world, the ocean plays an important part in heating up the land. Like here in Iceland, figure this one out. Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland, is at a latitude of 65 degrees north, but has a yearly temperature that is much higher than you would normally expect being this close to the North Pole. The mean annual temperature of Reykjavik is about 5 degrees Celsius. But on the coast of Alaska, at about the same latitude, the mean annual temperature is less than minus 3 degrees Celsius. How could this be? Well, it turns out that the ocean out here is bringing part of the Caribbean heat with it. The Gulf Stream starting in the Gulf of Mexico carries warm water north and east. A branch of the Gulf Stream called the Irminger Current splits off and flows along the southern and western coast of Iceland and warms the air, creating milder temperatures also on land. So can anything else affect our global climate? Unfortunately, yes. Human activities like burning oil, wood, coal and natural gas produce greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide. These have increased a lot over the last couple of hundred years. Greenhouse gases trap the infrared radiation, which would normally leave Earth's atmosphere. When greenhouse gases increase and more energy gets trapped, it causes our global temperature to increase. Scientists have evidence that this increase is already affecting climates worldwide. But would a slight change in temperature really be such a bad thing? I mean, it can get pretty cold up here. Wouldn't it be nice if we can just raise the temperature just a little bit? So you might think that increased temperatures would be beneficial. But one problem is that increased temperatures will melt polar ice caps and glaciers, which could flood coastal areas in many parts of the world. So we learned that precipitation and temperature are two principal factors that affect different climate. But humans have an impact too. As always, we encourage you to never stop exploring your world. How do you reduce your impact on our global climate? 
Brainstorm some ideas and make a list with your classmates and take action. It's freezing. I wish it was sunny. <laughs> <laughs> So teachers, we have not just done this video with Pearson Publishing. We've done like 200 videos, actually. Mm -hmm. But not all of them are on our website. We're actually integrating them into the new textbooks uh, for science with Pearson Publishing. And so you can check it out at the link right here.